You need to understand the difference between a payment processor and a shopping cart when you wanna sell things online. So, hi, my name is William Bean with Suburbia Press, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about payment processors, we're gonna talk about digital wallets because they're kind of part of the conversation, and we're also gonna talk about shopping carts. So I'm gonna give you an overview of what to look for and what kind of services are in each one. You need one, but you should probably have both a payment processor and a shopping cart. And also, I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes look at some of my accounts in uh, my payment processor, my shopping cart, and we'll take a look at a few things there and hopefully that'll answer some questions for you. So why don't, the, why don't we go ahead and get started? So let me click over here and let's go ahead with this little slideshow part. So here's what we cover. What are payment processors? Exactly what do they do? What are digital wallets? And the digital wallets would be things like Apple Pay, Google Pay, and even PayPal is a digital wallet. So what are shopping carts? We're gonna look at the criteria to choose a payment processor. We're gonna look at the criteria to choose a shopping cart. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna give a little bit of a demo of this. So let's start off with a payment processor. This is something that is a must have for anybody who wants to sell things online. So whether you're doing a course, a membership, if you've got digital products of some kind, if people are gonna give you money, you need to have a payment processor. So it is an intermediary between the buyer and the seller, ensuring the payment is processed securely. And this is important to everybody. They wanna make sure that if they're gonna put their credit card or other information online, that there is a way to secure that transaction so thieves can't intercept uh, their credit card numbers and so forth. So that way it has gotta be a secure thing. You may also have recurring billing. I mentioned something like a membership. Also, some software vendors now are doing much the same thing. In other words, you get a license. It's not a perpetual license because they will do ongoing development. So you get a license perhaps for one year. It handles subscription management. In other words, if somebody is subscribing to a service, then your payment processor will give you little things that can help you manage your subscribers and also to help the subscribers manage their own account. It handles fraud protection. So that way, if there is some kind of fraud, somebody's used a fake uh, credit card, they can identify that and prevent you from being the victim of fraud when you're just simply trying to sell something. You don't give something away and not really get paid for it. Also, it handles dispute resolution, which is unfortunate, but sometimes customers are unsatisfied. And if you can't resolve things with them and they uh, put a dispute up against the credit card, your payment processor can intervene there and handle that dispute resolution as well as their card company. So there's a little bit of uh, back and forth there. So some common payment processors. The number one common payment processor is PayPal. And you're gonna see this one come up again with our digital wallets. PayPal is a bit of a hybrid in that vendors can use it to accept payments. So it is a payment processor. It's not one that I recommend for most people who are selling things because while I love PayPal as a consumer, as someone who's selling digital products and services, the dispute process there really does favor the consumer and you can get locked out of things even with a false claim or something that maybe doesn't match the merits. So PayPal is available to you, but in my mind, it's not the best one to go with. Stripe is the one that I use and is very predominant in the US and other places. Square is another alternative. And Authorize.net is an older one, and it's got a lot of history with it. It's one also that I wouldn't avoid today because, in my opinion, it's not as modern as Stripe or as Square for some of the things that you want to do. Braintree is another one. Verifone is another one to go with. Amazon Pay is also a, a payment processor that you might want to do, particularly if you're selling things with Amazon. But it's another alternative, and it doesn't have to be just with Amazon products. And Payoneer, this is another one that uh, you'll see from time to time. It typically operates a bit more, I think, overseas, but also all of these are good. So what is a digital wallet? So what we're looking at is a software application or service that allows users to store and manage payment information securely on a digital device. In a way, it is an obfuscation between your charge card numbers and what the vendor receives. So examples include Apple Pay, Google Pay, and again, we say PayPal here. This is where I really love PayPal. As a consumer, 
I really like using PayPal. It's accepted in a lot of places, and they do a very good job of protecting the people who use PayPal to make payments. So digital wallets prioritize security by implementing authentication methods, including biometrics. So for example, on Apple Pay, you may have something on your Apple Watch, you may have a face ID, you may have touch ID. So there's a number of ways that they're using biometrics to secure that you are the person who is authorized to pay. And they help protect sensitive payment information by encrypting and securely storing it on the user's device or in the cloud. This is what I meant by the little obfuscation. In other words, the vendor doesn't get your charge card number. They simply get a token from these digital wallets that handles the transaction between the charge card and the vendor payment. So everybody gets what they want and you have more security using a digital wallet as a consumer. So as a vendor, you probably want to implement some of these uh, systems. So for example, I implement Apple Pay and Google Pay. And for a while, I used to implement PayPal because it is very easy. A lot of consumers have PayPal. If you're not going to implement PayPal, just make sure that you understand that some people may not want to do business because they don't have Apple Pay or Google Pay and they don't want to put in their credit card number. But on the other side of the coin, as a vendor receiving something or payment, it is very easy for a PayPal user to put in a dispute and get their money back, even though they've already got what you offer them. So something to keep in mind. All right, let's move on and talk about shopping carts. This is a software platform to facilitate the process of selling products or services online. In other words, this is your sales engine and it will connect with a payment processor. So it comes before the payment processor in the chain. You're using the shopping cart to get the buyer ready to make a payment. And that is your sales page. That is upsells, downsells, bump orders, and things like that. It also can allow for product management. And you can do a little bit of that with your payment uh, processor as well. And I'll show you that in both of the products when we look at our demo. So it integrates with your website and other services. In other words, if you've got a website or it could be a WordPress website. Maybe it is a platform that you use. Some people use Kajabi. Some people are using uh, ClickFunnels and other things. So these shopping cart services have to integrate with the payment processor and your website. So as, if you can't integrate it, you can't get people to your website and then convert them over for a sale without a good integration. And it provides order tracking and management. So that's a nice feature because obviously if you're going to have orders coming in, you need records to understand who ordered what and you need to manage them in case it's a recurring or there's a time period. You need to know when that expires and then are they going to renew? There's your sales opportunity again or do you need to cut off access to their uh, service or product? And of course, it provides some analytics and reportings because if you're going to be in business, you want to know what business you're conducting. All right, so some common shopping cart services. Thrivecart. Again, this is the one that I use. This is my favorite one. Uh, Samcart is another popular one. Gumroad is another popular one. ClickFunnels is a, a popular uh, shopping cart service. It's also, you know, like I said, it's a sales engine that gets people to the part where they need a payment processor. Kartra is uh, kind of an all-in-one service and it has uh, shopping cart services in it. ConvertKit Commerce. So if you work with an email provider, ConvertKit, they also have a shopping cart. And some e email providers also have shopping carts. Not all of them do, but ConvertKit is one. So there might be an opportunity, if it makes sense for you, if you're already using ConvertKit or this is a email service that you're going to use, you may want to integrate it with their uh, commerce platform. So what do you want to look at before you choose on a payment processor? Integration and compatibility. So you want to make sure that this can integrate with the services that you have. If you're going to go direct to your uh, payment processor and not use a shopping cart, then you need to make sure that you can either embed this on your site or there is some kind of integration. Usually Zapier is one way to get it if there's nothing else, but Zapier is an additional expense and it's also another complication. And compatibility, you just want to make sure that what you have is compatible, not only with your technology, but with your audience. Uh, you're going to find that there are many more payment processors than I've listed here. And we'll talk about this when we get to Thrivecart because they just added 40 more. 
because I'm US based and I'm thinking of most of my customers are from the US. But you also need to be able to worry about what are people dealing with in other parts of the world if you have a more global presence, because other payment processors may be more compatible with the audience that you have in other nations. So you're going to look at payment methods and currencies. Again, the currencies that they cover are going to be important to you if you're dealing with things in specific countries or regions. Transaction fees. In other words, when they process a transaction for you, how much does it cost you? And keep in mind, a transaction goes both ways. When you get paid, they're going to take a percentage. So usually like 2.9% is what I get charged. If somebody cancels and I offer a refund, that's another transaction. So that's another fee. So if somebody buys something from me, I don't get the full purchase price that they bought because of the transaction fee to pay me. And if I refund them their full purchase price, then there's a charge for that. So I will lose money on something that I have to refund. And if you ever see someone that says no refunds, this is one of the reasons why they may say that. Also, because once you've got something that's digital, it's kind of hard to pull that back. So you might be able to cut access off to something if they have to sign on to a community or service to get to it. But if you're selling a software license, that license is good as long as you've given them the permission. You might be able to cancel that license and revoke it, but it depends on what the product is. If you're selling digital products online and they download them, you can't get that back. So the transaction fees, keep that in mind for both the purchase price and the refund price. Security and fraud protection, which is important. Again, they partner with a lot of the credit card companies and they have their own tools to look for things that may be fraudulent purchases. And also you wanna look at the customer experience, the checkout process. Is it easy to understand? Does it make it simple? If people have an experience that is just too uh, difficult to understand, they'll abandon it. Nobody wants to fight to buy your product. So you've gotta make sure that the checkout experience and if there's a portal experience, that it's very simple and easy to use. And of course, customer support. If you have problems, you want to deal with a payment processor that you can contact, you can talk to somebody and you can resolve the problem. You wanna make sure they have good documentation in order to understand how to set things up and also how to resolve problems. They can even tell you what kind of problems may commonly appear and here's known solutions for them. And then you're looking for growth and reliability, particularly reliability because people can't buy if your payment processor isn't working. And fortunately, what most of the ones that I've mentioned uh, previously are fairly reliable. I honestly had a bad feeling about Samcart because of other people's problems with it and their reliability with it. I've known a lot of people that have left Samcart. Some went to Thrivecart, some went to WooCommerce on a WordPress site. So check out the reputation of your payment provider to make sure that it does what you need it to do when you need it to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at criteria for choosing a shopping cart. Remember, as I said, this comes before the sale. So usability is going to be very important. You want to make sure that you know how to set it up. It's easy for you on the back end to create uh, your orders and your sales pages and potential up and down sales. You want to look at the features that they offer. And sometimes that could be integrations with other services and products, but also how do they sell? Do they have trust factors or signals that can help you make a sale? Can they embed video in the sales pages? Can they give you uh, a lot of different features within uh, how you make those uh, sales funnels go? So I mentioned integration options. So obviously your payment processor you must have. Your shopping cart must be able to integrate with your payment processor. If it doesn't work, then that's a problem. Likewise, on the other end of the transaction, once the payment is done, you can automatically set up your product or service to download or to activate a user account. And it's helpful if you have an integration that does that. In some cases, these uh, shopping carts cannot integrate with everything. Most of them will integrate with uh, different services like Zapier is kind of like the 800 pound gorilla of integration, but it's a very expensive one for a lot of startup people. There's other things like uh, Integrately and these tools. There was a one that was sold on AppSumo called Connexit, but not every service integrates with these tools. So you might find that your shopping cart integrates with it, but if they don't integrate with the service that you want, then it isn't um, going to be useful for you. 
An example is that I use a tool called Searchy, which I host my courses on it and I just launched a new membership. I host that as well. So if somebody comes to me and buys something through a sales page I have on Thrivecart, it's going to go through Stripe to process the payment. And then at the end of that, I wanted to send the user information to create an account inside of Searchy. Natively, it doesn't have a Searchy integration, but it, both of them do integrate with Zapier. Now, Thrivecart will integrate with other tools, but Searchy won't. So you have to look at all the points of your equation to see where they will come together. Searchy will integrate with Zapier, and it does a very good job with it. Zapier also integrates with um, Thrivecart. And for that matter, Searchy has a native integration with uh, Stripe as a payment processor, which is not going to give you as much of a sales funnel or up or down sell opportunity. It's just basically you either buy this or you don't. But that's where the uh, shopping carts come in. So these integrations are things you need to look at to see how are they going to integrate not only with your payment processor, but with the site that's going to have your product or service. You're going to look at design and customization. Can you build it with the colors that you want that match your brand? Can you put in all the features, your headlines, your subheadlines, your paragraph text? Can you put in images? Can you add video? And those are things that how can you customize your sales page? How can you customize the user's journey when they place an order? So also a lot of people are shopping on their mobile devices, whether at a phone or an iPad or something of that nature. You want to make sure that you can have a good experience on a mobile device as well as on a desktop. Not everybody buys on a desktop anymore. You're looking for security and compliance. So security, obviously you want to have secure transactions. Again, just like you did with a payment processor, you want to make sure that you have encryption. Compliance means that you are abiding by whatever laws are necessary for your um, region or where you're doing your sales. Do you have to pay sales tax? Do you have to give notices or warnings? Do you have to have disclosures? And there are opportunities for disclosures and privacy policies inside of these tools. And of course, pricing and fees. How much does it cost you to operate? Not only is there an upfront price, is there a monthly or annual price? Or in the case of Thrivecart, it is a lifetime price. You pay once and then you're done. After that, you also look, are there other fees? And in the case of Thrivecart, they have other options that you can choose to buy or not. So for example, Thrivecart has uh, an enhanced version of it. They also have something called Learn, which is basically an educational platform where you can sell courses there. And then Learn also has Learn Plus. So there's an upsell to the uh, experience. If you buy a Thrivecart, you get Learn, then you can get Thrivecart Plus and uh, Learn Plus. But also Thrivecart is now combining or giving you the option to combine, I should say, with its email opt-in service called ConvertBox. And you can get a, a better deal when you get these upsells and buy them at the time. Something else I like about shopping carts is that you can put in evergreen offers, which means that they're always open, but they still have a, a sense of timeliness. So for example, somebody can go to your page and you can say, if you buy this other offer within the next 15 minutes, within the next hour, you can get it at this price. Otherwise the price goes up. And they're doing that by putting cookies on your browser. So if you go back with the same browser again, you're not going to get that price that you were looking at. So customer support, again, just like you did with your payment processor or almost anything you buy for your business, you want to make sure that you're happy with customer support, that they provide a good experience. So look at the reviews and ratings for any shopping cart to see if people have complaints or if they're really satisfied with that service. And that falls down to their reputation. And I think with shopping carts, this is going to be very important because some of them have a better reputation than others. As I said, I am very happy with Thrivecart and I think they provide wonderful service. Now, one of the differences is they're based in New Zealand. I'm in Florida. So customer support is based off of New Zealand hours, but that doesn't bother me. They've been very good. They have great support. If I put in something after their business hours have closed down, then I know I'm not going to get a response till later. But because they're in New Zealand, if I put something in in the morning on Eastern time, then their business day starts before I go to bed. So I may not have it within my business hours, but I'll probably have a response back before I go to bed that night. So it's all good for me. 
I'm finding that ThriveCard is, is very good. And you want to look at that reputation and customer support for any shopping cart service that you do. All right, so I promised a demo. Let's go ahead and get to that. So let's start off over here with Stripe. And this is, if you haven't logged in, this is kind of what they look like. And they're calling themselves Financial Structure for the Internet. And millions of companies of all sizes, from startups to Fortune 500s, use Stripe. And they also have APIs, which means that you can integrate it with your platform if you need to, to accept payments, send out payments, and manage your business. And as I've said, it is a very good service. It is a very popular service. It has a stellar reputation. And it's easy to use. That's one of the things I like about it. So you can see they've got an example of somebody who's paying something you know, on a mobile device. And in this case, there's an Apple Pay thing on there. So if you want to be able to support Apple Pay or Google Pay and other things, that this is something that you can do with Stripe. So here are a few uh, businesses that work with them. And they have a number of uh, integrated suites and financial payment products. I'm not going to go into those because most of the people who are looking at me are probably home-based small businesses, and they don't necessarily need to go through all that. But what this tells you is there is room for growth with your business in Stripe. So they can handle things as you grow and you need more services. They're a good place to go into. So let me go ahead and show you what my back end looks like for this. And what we have here is how you uh, set up your customer portal. So with this, you can see there are just several little things you can toggle on and off. And this side over here kind of shows you what the portal will look like. And this is the joy of going live. When you screw something up, <laughs> you don't even realize it because you're busy looking at one screen instead of another. All right, I'm going to go back a little bit. So this is Stripe. And this is what I was talking about when they're showing an example of how their uh, mobile pay works and how they have, uh, they're trying to give you a little bit of comfort here saying that everybody from startups to Fortune 500s uses them. And these are some of the businesses that are using them. And you can see these are big names, Google, Amazon, Salesforce, Slack. So it's trustworthy. That's what they're trying to show you right here. And these are the uh, financial payment products that I talked about. So you've got different ways of growing your business and they can work globally for you. So Stripe really is kind of a one place to do it all. And you're going to find out that there are options for uh, the tax concerns. This goes back to compliance, what I was talking about, uh, fraud prevention and management and a terminal if you need it for in-person payments. So let me go ahead and back over here to my portal. So I apologize for the confusion I had there. So let's go back and take a look here. This is kind of a look at what your customer is going to see managing their own uh, payment portal. And it might help if I didn't tap the wrong thing. And there I go off to the wrong thing. So I'm going to roll with it because this is live. Things screw up. As far as products, this is kind of what you can do. You can go ahead and add a new product. So we'll go ahead and just give it a name. You can put an image up here and you can give a description. Now, if you want some additional options, you can give it a description of what it is. And they've got a little help text. So this says it'll override what your account descriptor is. So if you're making payments, in my case, uh, my business name is Suburbia Labs, but I'm doing this for Suburbia Press. So that's my default. But I've also got other sites where I may set this up. So I may need to override it. Like maybe it is William Beam Photography. You can give a label for your units. You can add additional information as far as metadata. So you can have key and value pairs. And then you can add a feature list. These are things that I would typically put in a shopping cart. But it's nice to know that... If you're just going to use a payment processor, you can have features in here because when people are buying something, they want to know what they're getting. And then, of course, you can do your pricing options. And is it a package price? Is it graduated volume? So you can choose these different things. And then you can choose your price and then also your currency. And as you can see, there are a lot of different currencies available here. And then you can decide, is it recurring 
or is it one time? So a recurring, let's say for a subscription or a membership, you can say, is it monthly or you've got a number of options here or yearly. Now, what you can do with this is you can add a couple of uh, options here. So for example, let me go back to one of mine in this uh, membership I have here. This is the membership I just started and I have two different pricing. So an annual, I've got it $570 per year and and monthly $57 a month. So you can see that this one gives them two month discount if they buy for the year. So if you wanna do something like that within Stripe, then you can do that. And you can also cross sell if you have other products in there. But those are, again, are things that I would rather do in a shopping cart. So let me go ahead and show you Thrivecart. And I'm glad that this shows what's happened today because nothing's happened today. And that lets me kind of keep some stuff private. So let's say for this one on the Headway membership, I can go ahead and I can create a new product. So up here we can see we have products and all I have to do is just kind of look down through some of my other products over here and create a product here. So I could just go ahead and uh, click that. But let's go inside of this one and we're gonna click edit. And you get these tabs that are under product and you'll have fulfillment and checkout and behavior. So what you're doing is you're giving it a name obviously and a label that will identify it. So when people see it, um, you're gonna have a checkout page URL. When you use Thrivecart, you're going to have a page that you can put in like a subdomain. It could be like sales.yourdomain.com slash, and that's where this checkout page URL is. And you can have it disabled. You can have it in test mode, so you can try it out before you go live. And then, of course, you can go live. And then you can set your product pricing. And I've got two here, again, monthly and uh, annual payment. So when I created this here, because I have an integration with Stripe, it automatically created that inside of Stripe. So I didn't really have to go into Stripe to do that work. A bump order is something that you offer where maybe they check a box, say like, since you bought this, maybe you'd like this additional add-on. And it's usually a low dollar thing. So maybe, you know, here are some sales page templates, you know, check this box and you can add like $17, for example, you know, to add this to your order. And it just gives people an option to say, is this something that would enhance the product that I'm buying? So that's why I said sales page templates, if that works for whatever you're selling, if we were selling a shopping cart service, sales page templates might be a useful thing. All right, so the next thing you can do is you can assign your processors. So I have Stripe, I have Apple Pay, I have Google Pay, and I could put in PayPal here. You can see where it says edit your processors. It will give me a, a lot more choices. And as I mentioned, or at least I hope I mentioned it, Thrivecart just a couple days ago added 40 more payment processors. So if you're using things that are common and familiar in other countries, chances are you've got them here. Even though Stripe can have all these different currencies, some people might have accounts with Alibaba or other things in their uh, country or region that they're more familiar with or they already have accounts set up. So it might be easier for them to work with some of those services. And then if you want to have affiliates, you can check this box and you can set it up so that other people can sell your product or service. And that way they make some money, you get additional sales and you can put in whatever the percentage point is. So if you're looking for a way to do affiliate sales, a shopping cart is a good way to do it, particularly with Thrivecart. All right, so after that, you'll go over to fulfillment. So how are people gonna get this? And it depends on what you wanna do. So you could send them to a URL or you could add them to your membership site. And those are things that you would have with the integrations we talked about. So send to a URL could be anything. It could be just like, here's where you go to register now that you've made your payment. Or in this case, since the last product I did uh, wasn't built yet at the time that I created uh, the product, I just showed them a uh, total and invoice. And then I had descriptive text on there telling them what to expect. And then I could email them with updates as I'm building out the site. So there's opportunities there. And if you uh, want to add a CD or DVD, they integrate with this uh, company called Kanaki so that you can add that as well. So then comes the checkout. And this is where you've got a few different options. So standard is where that URL is going to show on your domain connected to Thrivecart. And then a sales cart is the same thing, but 
you've got a bit more options here. You can see that this is for a video. So a standard is just kind of a very simple checkout page. Whereas this one, you can really get into building up your sales page on the shopping cart service. So that way you can kind of lead them through all the different things that you may want on a sales page. Embeddable is if you want to have this on your own website. So it's still being processed by Thrivecart, but you'll get some HTML code. You put this on a page on, let's say your WordPress site or some other site and you can embed it. And then that way, the customer experience never leaves your site, even though Thrivecart or whatever your shopping cart is, is handling it. So that's something you may wanna look at when you're evaluating if you decide to go with other carts. And then also you can do it as a pop-up on your page or your website rather than sending them to a page. So it's really a kind of how much are you going to do there? An embeddable I would do with something like a sales funnel that kind of leads them through all the questions and answers that you want to get to to buy your product or service. And you can do that, I think, with the embeddable as well. And then a pop-up is probably going to be a much more simple thing where it's like kind of a yes or no question. So then we come into design. And when you get to the design, then you get this little thing, launch editor. And if you've already got one, you can copy it from another product. You can import a design. You can share it with other people. So that was an example of like you might want to sell a sh shopping cart a checkout page designs. You could create them and then share them and then sell those as the bump order. So let's go ahead and launch the editor. And this one is pretty simple. But what I wanted to show you is over here, you can have multiple steps or you can do it in one step. So I've got a cart page and then a success page. So if I click on that, this is what people got, you know, when they bought um, my membership. And that'll change as I'm updating what the uh, checkout process looks like. So you can do it with some page options over here. You can adjust your spacing. You can have it boxed or you can have it as a full page. You can have a sidebar like this part over here on the left or right. You can do multi-step or if I click this for single step, then everything you know will come down in one place. So it, I kind of like the multi-step. And the same thing with the uh, cart flow is uh, I like that having a multi-step. So you can choose your brand colors, you can choose your font, and it just kind of gives you a number of things. Now, one of the things I had over here before was a um, countdown timer. So I had an end to when I was making this offer. So I could just drag that up here to the top. Well, let's try that again. There it is. And countdown timers don't fit within their page. You can just simply drag them here. So you can do this, as I said, evergreen or fixed. So a fixed offer ends on a specific date and time. An evergreen offer kind of gives them uh, a timer it says, when does this uh, timer end? So you can see it offer ends within days, hours, and minutes from whenever they have visited this um, page. So you've got an option there. And then when the, the timer ends, you can replace the cart with a message, which is probably a common thing to do, or take them to another page if you have something else that you might want to try and get them to. But that is uh, another option that you have there. So you've got a number of things. You can have images, video, testimonials from people who've purchased already. And let's, before I forget, let me get rid of that. Or I just won't uh, save this. And then you can have bullets, uh, a buy link, guarantee seals. So if you see these, let's bring this over here. Guarantee seals offer you these little things that are meant to get people to think that um, you're giving them a money back guarantee. There's a huge discount. Or also you want to give it like 14 day refund, 30 day, 60 day. You might want to show that if you've won some awards or there's a secure checkout, a trusted seller, and then you've got a few down here that are in color. So these are things to try and help your visitor uh, understand that you can, uh, you're trustworthy. That's really what they are. They're trust signals. All right. I got rid of that. Yes, I want to delete that. And you can have frequently asked questions. So basically, you can build this page out and you can add sections over and over if you really want to work out that flow. So as I said, next, we would take us over to our success page. I'm going to go ahead and exit this. I'm going to exit without saving. And then if you want to track it, you'll see that you've got things. You can add a Facebook pixel. You can add uh, 
Google uh, Analytics. And there's another one down here that I don't know, uh, VWD. But there's a couple of auctions there to track. And you can also have some embed code. And then finally, you get to your checkout. Or excuse me, we were on checkout. And then we get to some behavior. So what happens when someone abandons the cart? Some uh, services, you can e integrate this with your email. So for example, I mentioned a convert kit. It has an integration. Then if somebody uh, abandons the cart, you can send them a follow-up email. And if they make a purchase, you can, uh, again, do something there. I've got mine set up in Slack. If a payment gets declined, you want to know about that? You can quickly add these rules, and it gives you a few options. So you can see the main product. There's also for subscriptions. If a recurring uh, payment is made, or if it fails for a second or third time, if a subscription gets canceled, and if a payment is upcoming or due or is overdue. So there's different ways for you to get notifications. And then what you see in here, so for example, if I had uh, convert it as one of my options, I could go ahead and just send an email to that. I can have custom HTML that can take care of something. And in my case, I, can, I have Slack. So, And you can also choose this to run this only in specific locations. So you've got a number of options there. And that is kind of the flow there. Now, what we didn't talk about would be upsells and downsells. So you can create an upsell. What is an upsell versus a bump? A bump is a small thing. An upsell is, since you bought this, you may really like this offer. And that's probably going to be a higher priced option for them to buy. And if they decline that, then you go to a downsell. A downsell is, okay, that was maybe too much for you. How about if we give you this smaller version of it or something that like maybe you like the idea, but you didn't want to pay as much as the upsell. So the downsell gives you another chance to get additional revenue from someone who's made a purchase. If you want to do A-B testing, you can give uh, different products. You can get uh, different shopping carts. And also, if you want to do coupons, they've got a few uh, in here. It's so like, is there 100% off? Because... I gave somebody a free uh, members only coupon. And then there are options that I can give people uh, different things if they're one time or late. So it depends on what you want to do with coupons. You, most times it's usually a percentage discount, and but the percentage can go up to 100% if you want to give it to somebody for free. And you might want to do that if they're doing a review or they're a business partner, whatever your circumstances are. So I mentioned uh, ConvertBox. Now, this is not a shopping cart or payment processor, but it is affiliated with Thrivecart. The same people own both of these products. And as I said, if you look at the Thrivecart thing, they're giving it an offer now, and this is an email opt-in service. Again, like Thrivecart, it is a one-time payment. So another one I used to use is called Opt-in Monster. Very good service, but also it charged annually. So I would end up spending $200 a year for Opt-in Monster, and I like them. They had really good service. I still, you know, every once in a while, I get some messages from one of the managers over there. She's great. And I'm, I'm very happy with Optin Monster, except for paying for it for a couple hundred bucks every year. I have already been using ConvertBox for a few years. And what I paid one time has already saved me money from the next years that I need to go on that I would have been paying Optin Monster. So you can set up with uh, different groups over here. So whatever your websites are. And let's say if we want to create a new convert box, you can call this a uh, demo. And which group do you want to put it in? I'll put it in Suburbia Press. And then you have a type. Is it going to be an overlay or an embedded? So with the overlay, you'll see that there's a sticky bar. There's a little slide in modal. There's a center modal or a full page. If you look at an embedded, this would be something that either you have a large one that you put maybe in the center of a page or a small one that might go in a section or on your sidebar. And then let's say that uh, we look at an overlay and we choose this little slide in. And then it shows you different examples. So you might have a picture and a little thing over here. You might choose between uh, different options. You might do a lead generation. You can have a video message. For the, and there are templates over here for webinars and a number of other things. The nice thing about this is they don't necessarily have to be something that integrates with your email service, although that is the most common thing, but maybe somebody's looking at a affiliate marketing, you know, best of list that you have, and you want to make sales for your top selling item. You might want to put in a little slide in a pop-up that says, hey, I see you're looking at 
XYZ product, click this link to go to the, my uh, most recommended product. And it takes in there, puts your affiliate link in. So you've got options. You might be able to still add them to your email list, but then you're also referring them for an affiliate sale. So there's different ways to use these things. And there are a lot of options here, or you can skip and build your own from scratch. So you can get almost anything you want. And I would say Optin Monster has a few things that this one doesn't have. So for example, they have one on a higher priced version of what they offer that looks kind of like a wheel of fortune. But in my mind, that's kind of overkill for what you need for an opt-in, whether it's a pop-up or embedded. So that is uh, just wanted to put that in there because it's related to Thrivecart. If you decide that you want to get Thrivecart, you may want to look at the bundle because they're both one-time payments. And in the long run, you could save money instead of having recurring payments for other uh, shopping carts or other uh, opt-in. And with that, so I hope this has been helpful for you. You must have a payment processor. You should have a shopping cart because that helps you manage the sales funnel so much better. And I hope that that is helpful for you. If you have questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely get back to you. And of course, there are links to Stripe, Thrivecart, and also ConvertBox in the description below. So that way, if you decide you want to check them out, it's easy and convenient for you to do so. And you might want to take a look at some of the competitors as well. Whatever works for your needs. But those are the services that I use and recommend. And I've been very happy with them. No complaints so far. All right. Take care. I'll see you again next Thursday.